I just like to say thanks to the uh, the caller. You know, he he mentioned some issues that I think he seems to be following history. Um, we all learn from history, and what I'm seeing is not so much that because uh, I think the minister, the Mr. Minister, talked about vindictiveness. He was trying to challenge, which is just appalling, you know. Well, let's let's get back to the, the gentleman. Uh, I appreciate what he said. His acknowledgement of Thomas Kumba. You know, um, I know that most of you I have not spoken, and the good old minister who is now saying I'm taking things backwards and we should move on. You know, I bear to differ with him in a big, big sense because check his record out with Charles Stiller. Thomas Kumba, as you noted, was not a violent person. I'm so glad we all are on this line. He mentioned Thomas Kwongba in the field coup. I want Liberians to know. When I went to Liberia in 2010, I protested in Minnesota. I have been trying because that, that coup that occurred, it was not Kwongba's coup. It was Ellen Johnson Salis, Wema family, and Harry Yuan. We were residing in Baltimore. 1935 Drew Hill Avenue, to be precise. In 1985, Madam Ellen Johnson Salis came to Baltimore, 1935 Drew Avenue, with Harry Yuan. They brought that enterprise the proposition for a coup. Thomas Kwongba made it vehemently clear that he was not interested, and you can check the records, Mr. Minister, because when they came, Thomas Kwongba was enrolled at the Baltimore Community College. When Ellen Johnson Salif and Mr. Harry Yuan came to our house at 9 p.m. Baltimore time, they brought a proposition to overthrow Doe. Thomas Kongwa made it clear. He said, I'm in school. I want to learn, and I will not take part in any coup. Ellen Johnson Salif and Harry Yuan left. This information, Thomas Kongwa revealed it to Reverend Father Thomas Hayden. He is a priest. He stay alive. Thomas said, Ellen Johnson came, and I told her I was not interested. A couple of days later, the very Ellen and Harry Yuan came back to 1935 Drew Hill Avenue. Mr. Minister, I will educate you so you don't tell me that I'm taking things backward. When they came back the second time, Ellen Johnson said and Harry Yuan brought in a picture of Thomas Kwongba at the time the mother was in her 70s. The old lady hands were tied to the back, they told us that those soldiers had raped the old lady. They had her on the plane. We saw the stuff, and they had her head over the wing. They opened up the plane door, and you could see her hair. Everything was sticking out, and you get electrocuted. That picture alone had an emotional impact on Thomas Kuanqua. It was that picture when Ellie and Harry Yuan brought that changed Thomas' mind, and he joined that enterprise. Now, when Ellen Johnson said came to Minnesota. She was invited here by the Carson School of Management to speak in 2010. Prior to that, I have been trying to reach out to her because since you think, I'm, Mr. Minister, I'm saying this because, you you know, when you pull a bush, you pull a rope, you pull a bush. Let us get it clear so you can understand. I'm not being vindictive. I'm just saying the history of Ellen Johnson's belief. She came to power with people blood. And she came and she said she knew how to fix the problem. They elected her. The records are there. I even said I did not want her to be the president in 2005, but the life that we spoke, we all respected that. So I hope you pay close attention. Since you brought it up, we'll discuss it. When time came, I made all effort to reach the president to ask her about what went wrong. She did not listen. She bypassed me. So when she came to America, precisely Minnesota, I took upon myself to go and ask her, no Kada, who is currently, I think she was the former representative, no Kada brought me to her. I said, where is Thomas? What happened? The very early Johnson said, he told me, I will talk to you later. At that time, I could not even speak or articulate anything. I was the kindergarten girl that she thought she had seen years back. So when I tried to reach her, she told me after the occasion, at that time, she was soliciting funds for her and sent them to the presidency in Minnesota. She never talked to me, and she took off. So when I realized all my effort went in vain, I decided to protest in Minnesota in 2010. And Natalia Barnes, who was the ambassador at that time, the same thing you're doing, tried to prevent me from protesting. The Ellen Sutton Johnson asked me to stop me to call me to, to stop my protest. I said, well, if she can answer my question, I just need to know. It's been almost 30 years. 
By 6 p.m., my phone number was called. Abdullah Dukle called me up. The person that wants to meet with me, which was perfect. That's what I wanted. When I went to a hotel at the Hilton in Minnesota, in that meeting, there was Copper Dwayne, there was the very Rob Salim, there was Ashura, one of Ellen's sister was there. In that meeting, they asked me what happened, and I explained. And I explained exactly what I said. I said, you know the enterprise you guys brought to Thomas. It was not his enterprise. It was you guys' case. The fact that you all took off and never even came back to say, yes, Thomas went back close to his children, I said, that is unacceptable. And the president then said, well, I don't remember. And then her, her son, Rob, suddenly jumped in and said, Mother, you guys did this lady wrong. So I said, Rob, suddenly don't say much. If anything is wrong, let us go. How are you? I can attest to it. They agreed in that meeting that I come to Liberia so we can resolve my issue with Harry Yuan and Ellen. Ellen herself said, they come to Liberia, I will call Harry Yuan. We will resolve it. 2010, I got on the plane, went to Liberia. When I went to Liberia, the first thing I said, I saw Mr. Uh, 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 I said, where is Nancy Doe? I would like to meet with her. It's time to make peace. When I looked, I was assured that I would be seeing Nancy Doe. The next day, I was told that the president wants to see me. It was a weekend. I went there. What did I see? Nancy Doe. When it was time for us to discuss about how you are, the president fell in hope. Oh, moral duty. To this day, I asked her. She said, I am not saying personal because you guys are saying that write letter and give it to the president. Ellen does not listen because she knows this is a vindictive lady. Do you understand me? So basically, from that meeting, I went to Liberia with a clear conscience. I came back to the state. People said all kinds of things that she gave me money. I did not take one cent, believe me, you or not. I didn't take a dime. But the notion that she had me fly to Liberia to discuss and resolve the issue, she did not call Harry Yuan. To this day, when I went to Liberia, I have not seen Harry Yuan. Ellen only used that occasion because she had planned to become the run again to use the photo app with me and Nancy Doe. When you talk about truth reconciliation, you don't burn people up again, and that's what happened. So let me tell you all, I am not vindictive. What I'm seeing the very Ellen Johnson said provided information that led to a lot of people dying, executed on the poll. So it tells me she understands how to fix this, the, the, the issues in Liberia, the infrastructure. It will be her priority. She has failed desperately. So I'm sitting there and staying alive. But she knows what I know, what she has been doing. She understands that. So the notion that people are saying I'm vindictive, I am not. I have come to this country, I have educated myself, and she refused to kind of provide the information for Thomas Kuang, my children. I have tried in my best way to say, you know what, we were the cause of what happened to our people in Liberia, but our people deserve the right thing, the right treatment. 